Uh, now in the studio we have Diamond Noir. Uh, welcome, guys. Thanks hey, for coming. Thank you. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> do we just want to go around and introduce yourselves and tell us what you do in the band? Yeah, um, I'm Billy, uh, Billy Jade, and I play uh, bass guitar, uh, do vocals and a bit of keys. I'm Wayne, I play guitar in a band. I'm Lee, I do the beats, the drummer. And how's he? I play guitars. And I have a mad death lock. <laughs> <laughs> Self professed. <laughs> mad death lock. A lot of care goes into that death lock. <laughs> the band was for, uh, founded in um, LA when um, headed up over there to record a, like, a new record. Um, what, what caused you guys to head on up there to? Got some music. You want me yeah, to answer that um, one? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, basically we had an opportunity with a previous band. Uh, they asked uh, Logan Mater from uh, Machine Head Soulfly. He asked us to come over with our previous band to record uh, some tracks. And basically the band fell apart just as we were about to leave. So um, Housey Noise and myself, Billy, uh, we flew over and just did did the uh, like repackaged the band with just the two of us, and then basically did it with him on our own. <laughs> uh, initially, Logan was going to mix it, but he very pers charmingly persuaded us. He goes, if you come across and work with me, hang out in LA for a month, we can make this super awesome. So <laughs> we, we basically was just two members left, and we are like, screw it, let's just go, have a holiday, hang out in LA. <laughs> Sounds like a good Why plan. Not? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> from there, how did the band actually get together? To where so from now. there, we've always known Wayne. He's been like to all our gigs, and <laughs> he's my <friend>. long-term <laughs> friend, yeah. long-term groupie. So <laughs> yeah, we basically we came back um, after doing that. We took a month off. I had a first break, I think, in four years from music. We finished up a release with the last band, and we're like, "Cool, where are we going to go now?" We met up with Lee. Or we've met in contact with Lee. Yeah, got yeah. Contact. had a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, was it a latte? Yeah, look, and then <laughs> Wayne obviously was a no-brainer, being a long-term friend and obviously fan of previous endeavors, and he's a good-looking guy. So we're like, <laughs> <laughs> "How can you resist?" <laughs> <laughs> when you actually did get around and form this band, where did you record this EP you just released and how did you find the process of working together? Yeah, so it was great. We just went across to LA and did it in basically Logan has his own studio in his house. So we basically went to the hills and uh, to his mad huge pad over there and just <laughs> <laughs> sat in his basement and um, recorded a few tracks. So that was a great experience just to see how it all works over there. Yeah, I was, I was eyeballing his Soulfly Gold record. <laughs> I wonder if I could fit that in my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, the Machine Head one too. But it was, it was awesome. Like for us, it was about getting out of Australia and learning things. Like we all we took was a guitar each. We didn't bring our amps or anything. We just went across with our songs and were open to it to be produced. And we knew what we could achieve in Australia with our friends and our own potential. But it was a, it was a chance to go work with a world class producer, not just someone who calls himself world class in Australia and actually has world class results and have someone churn up our art and go here's where you can take it if you spin it this way you appeal to another you know genre or so we, we started thinking globally not so much traveling to Sydney or Brisbane <laughs> how many fans we could we get it was about that you've got an awesome product we can make this awesome so let's let's put in the the four weeks and yeah he really sort of workshopped the, the sound Hollywood and LA it's all about hooks and it's <laughs> like Logan said to us it's one of the few cities left in the world where they spend money on, on the music industry and they don't mess around so um, we would have spun out of what their metal scene is like it's nothing like ours all right. walking around Hot Topic and then the and the malls like it's just like it was like a, a back to the future sort of thing it's like these guys are just another scene another world and we had we obviously got our influences, but it was we sort of just soaked up everything we were hearing there. We kind of just went with what we could do as well, mm. because obviously we were a two piece going over, mm. and there's only two of us to draw influences from. So we basically like uh, the band that we were previously in. I was just the bass player, um, so it evolved to me singing 
um, in this recording. So, uh, yeah, we basically drew a lot of influences from, like, I guess, a lot of female-fronted bands, okay. um, which we hadn't really thought of before because we weren't doing that. But, um, yeah, we basically just took whatever we could with us. And the, the, the biggest influence was to be modern. Like, we didn't want to be dated to what's cool and current now because, well, what is that anyway? It changes <laughs> every day. <laughs> but, like, yeah, just big, big guitar riffs, big solo drums, the, you know, that the slave that groove, big fat bass lines, introducing pianos. Um, more of the modern bands, like, I guess, when we were there in this moment, we're starting to break really big. Um, every metal band with a chick in it had to sort of look and sound like that. But we didn't want to... Obviously, we have our Australian roots, and we're like, cool, we'll, you know bring our flavours into it but yeah like I think bands like Motionless and White weren't even huge over there back then they were sort of scraping club shows but it's inter- interesting to see like where their scene has come since we've come back and all these bands have just got bigger and bigger and there's, they've, got a, they've got a massive pop infusion in their music and it's more synth based the metal it's not our, our scene's very death metal raw grind that old school 10 years ago flavour but over there it's just, it's just everything's polished like what's um What's that big friggin' band? <laughs> oh, <laughs> friggin' that band. One. Yeah, 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 that one. Uh, yeah, that one. Oh, Bon Jovi. Uh, yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can't think of um, Beyond, is Beyond the Horizon. What's Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, that kind of thing. It's just <laughs> massive, you know, massive sounds. Um, yeah. And we just wanted to get as much of that as we could. We're like, we want to go back home to Australia, hating this place so much that we have to come back to yeah. their audience for that product we made. So <laughs> <laughs> that was the influence. So we have obviously been talking about the recording process with just the two of you, but kind of how has it been now with obviously the two new members and kind of playing through that material? Have you found that the sounds kind of changed or evolved with... The drum sound is better. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it's been great. Like, he's a great drummer. We um, had a session drummer over there and basically he set the standard for what we we needed to achieve when we had a drummer in Australia and that was really high. (laughs) So we came back and basically Lee was the only we interviewed a few drummers and Lee was the only one that could pull it off without you know drawing too much in there or not enough so yeah and same with Wayne he just nailed it but yeah they both bring their own element to it and it's like better live obviously than Mm. I think than what we recorded now. That was Monsters by Diamond Noir. We're lucky enough to be joined in the studio by the guys. Um, We've been chatting with them about their latest EP Monsters. Um, it, it did particularly well in the iTunes charts. Did you expect that reception? No, no way. way. <laughs> <laughs> up, no. no way. We were yeah, just blown one. away. Yeah. We were just like up there with like the Amity Affliction. I think they were. They yeah. just kept. They're the only ones we couldn't. Mm. The only ones we could knock <laughs> off the top. But <laughs> I, I, we were just like. The thing is, I, I randomly just just looked at the charts. I think I think I went out on a Friday. I looked at it like on Saturday morning. I was just curious, you know. It was number thirteen. I was on a text with all these guys. <laughs> 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 How did yeah. it then and we kept jumping the gun. They could put yeah. it on the Facebook. Oh, it's number ten, and it's like the kids kept going. But then, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. within another, another day, it was at number two on the metal charts and number thirteen on the rock charts. And we're like, this is That's awesome. Really yeah. <laughs> Total independent, no budget promo, like just <laughs> social media, and yeah, I guess whatever crazy. fan base. Considering how much yeah. money is pumped into those bigger bands, and yeah, it was cool. we yeah. did it on our own, so we were just like, wow, High five. <laughs> <laughs> who are these people? I want to know them. <laughs> It's incredible. It did do really well. Also, talking about that single, what was the kind of filming of the video like and everything? Had you guys done anything like that before? It was fun. Yeah, yeah. it was so much fun, especially with the dancers. They were all nuts. And <laughs> yeah. Really nuts. But it was, yeah, it was great. Like, we just went to this massive art studio in Kensington, and uh, they have all these different rooms. So it was just, like, half the day we weren't on set. We were just exploring all these, like, strange, like, there's caves and weird stuff that they've just built. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to the school stuff, it was about getting the message of the lyrics across. And I think for most of it, it's having a fun element too. Like everything's so serious these days. It was like, have a few spoofy, you know, American Pie moments. <laughs> no one used the pie for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Or maybe backstage. Lee might have eaten it after. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we had a bunch of friends come down and we put out the big casting call and we actually cancelled the first shoot because we only had four people wanted to come down and we're like, it was just before people. Christmas so it was kind but of like a really bad time <laughs> everyone just turned up in these awesome little outfits and we're like we had like the, the, the classic looking geek the jocks wow. yeah and they everyone really just it. notched 
stood up and was this where, where all these actors come from like yeah. it was awesome you couldn't have paid for the acting that mm. everyone came down and just helped out a lot of it was spontaneous too it was yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lot of things that we just did and it's like oh that's cool yeah we had a couple Lighting of things ideas. on like, fire I threw a kid into a wall but Al, Al Bates who filmed it like she did a mad job but she just kept the camera rolling towards the end and we're like cool let's just wreck this classroom you and guys stood back and everyone yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, these guys were throwing people against the walls and <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, watch it, this is so cool Halsey like, and I had a scene um, basically when they were all going nuts and we were at the front of the room so it wasn't being filmed so we kind of just stood there and we were just like yeah. oh my what god <laughs> like I hope we're not going to have to pay for this yeah, <laughs> like burnt, ruining this room fun. but yeah it was fun. it was luckily yeah. everything was intact but <laughs> Oh well, yeah, you're launching the EP on the 29th at the SP Front Bar with Electric Dynamite and Barbarian. Uh, what can we expect from the show? And Scott, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah Red Pants. Pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling them out of the closet. Yeah. 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 They've been on hiatus. Oh, look, it's going to be rad. Like, it's actually our third show as a band, but don't let that, you know. We've been around the box. Yeah, we've we'll, 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 we'll been players in different bands over the years, but we've just got a rad show ready to go out, and we're just going to pump it hard and hopefully follow up the sound of the EP and make it a cool I think night. Ev- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always interrupt people. Uh, um, I, talk to I think every when we play live already, people don't expect how, like, I'm speaking for a band, we're a bit of ourselves. No, not really. <laughs> but, um, no, no, like, people that don't expect us to be so good, I guess this is what they say, I guess. They sort yeah. of look, go, oh, I can't believe, like, when we played our first and second gig, I can't believe we only done one or two gigs. It's just, As yeah. Band. Yeah, as this band. Oh, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah, we've been yeah. in other bands before, but like. Uh, it's just a very yeah. high energy performance, yeah. I guess. A, a lot of the songs are high energy and heavy, and yeah, yeah we definitely. Try and bring some LA to Melbourne. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But yeah, yeah. Come, come down. It's, was it 29th, 29th of, August? of August at the SP Front Bar? Uh, what <laughs> else can we expect from Diamond Noir and, and Felicity? Rock! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we can expect. Yeah, yeah. no, basically, um, our plan is to hang around Australia for the next six months and then basically we'll be looking at overseas again so getting back to our obviously our roots in LA and branching out from there with hopefully with another couple mm. of big bands um, yeah, we, we, we're pretty much just gonna yeah sorry yeah sorry <laughs> just, just you know try and touch every city with a show if we can get to a, like a good show we don't we want to sort of hang out for like the little festivals that happen and yeah. so we've got a Melbourne show a pending Canberra date we're we'll allowed to lock, lock in and try and get around and do some shows build up some experience here and pull our show together so when we head back to LA we sort of jump back into their scene on, on their level and we have a few little things in the pipeline that we definitely want to be touring overseas like we love Australia but seven major cities and it's not that broad of a country to get around and the, the <laughs> still best, fun yeah. and the people are great yeah Aussies are awesome <laughs> yeah, they are they really are there's a big wide world out there that's it yeah, that's, that's, that's it. what we realised <laughs> we realised how quickly how small the scene was in Australia that we were sitting in and we'd always heard that from touring bands and other international people but when you're actually out of Melbourne and you're in a, a, a county like of California that is the population of your country, which is one state of America, it's like your mind boggles man and big world out there and we want to get into it. <laughs> awesome. So a question for you, Billy Jade. Yeah. Um, so coming from being a bassist to now being the front of a band, yeah. um, have you found a noticeable change in that and being like such a male-dominated dom- genre? Um, yeah, I guess when I was playing bass, I think now that I actually have a voice in the band, it's easier than ever. Okay. Um, I've always been singing. Like singing is obviously my true passion in life. It's not ba- – playing bass is secondary, but it's something that I just kind of did uh, because I love working with housing noise <laughs> but um, oh okay oh my god it changes every <laughs> second day but, <laughs> but yeah but it is very male dominated and it is um i guess but it, it kind of does separate i i guess you guys separate you from a lot of bands being female fronted and being also like doing heavy vocals as well as mm. melodic uh, which is i think uh more females need to be doing it yeah getting out there and rocking because the guys are taking over and <laughs> Stuff the boys. Yeah. yeah and then it's, yeah, we need to get out there and kick it. <laughs> right on, I'm all for that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you can catch these guys at the ESPY um, front bar on the 29th August. of August. August. Yeah. Three weeks. <laughs> Three weeks, so Marketing not far away. Out. So, yeah, cheers for coming in, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. No worries.